I think that I probably never would have become an artist if it wasn't for having music in my life. Music was such a big, big part of me understanding the world and also of having a way to have kind of historical awareness and emotional experience come together. Artists are attracted to the magic flute because Papageno, the central character who is so charming and lovable, is the artist. The librettist wrote the story for him to play Papageno. His kind of predicament is in so many ways the predicament of the artist. He is not your typical character in an opera and he is so vulnerable and he is also the writer. He's clearly the author. I guess, or my motivation on some level was to, to translate the, the aspects of the opera that had to do with the kind of fundamentals of the desire to, to see yourself in another person. Knowing that Mozart was extremely carnivalesque and extremely um, physical, being or sexualized personality. One of the things I hope the viewer recognizes is how emotionally overwhelming the love songs are. In the Papageno sequence, it's the song where he's speaking so candidly about, I just want to kiss another person. And if I can't do that, I really can't take it anymore. What's so beautiful about this kind of theme of the coupling, which is also its pop component, is, is mirrored in the kind of dark and light coupling of the moon and the sun. You know, it's basically yin and yang. You know, that we have this sort of highbrow narrative and we're gonna put some kind of like, you know, like body humor in there just to like titillate the masses. No, it's like the body stuff is directly linked to the highest contemplation of this kind of the, the battle of the forces of, you know, of like yin and yang. You know, so there's all of these kinds of super lighthearted kind of witticisms or something. There's, a, there's such a comedic quotient to it, and so it feels like really like highbrow comedy. And Mozart can turn that into a formal complexity. but I think it's a really interesting point about how artists, sometimes people, when they're interpreting art, they think, oh, this is this and this and this, but then the artist will see very clearly, oh, this is a joke. And I guess what I was hoping was that the, to, to show how deeply intertwined the joke is to the profound, and I think that's what artists are able to do um, more than historians or journalists or what have you. My discovery from working on it in the way that I did was how pop it actually was and how emotionally impactful it was without a complex narrative or any kind of deep meaning behind the power relations between the people, but just that kind of, I just want to make out with somebody. <laughs> they actually get to that base, base, feeling of desire that is at the heart of almost every pop song. You know, whatever that kind of celebration of that feeling, which feels misleading and dangerous in, in so many ways, that to me is like the heart of pop. I think that one of the 
interesting challenges of crossing disciplines in a collaboration like this is, is not being able to speak someone else's language. There is something extra extraordinarily rewarding about reading, and people forget that. Just the kind of fundamental magic of what it means to make something come alive in your own head. And I feel like, so artists maybe respond and they think, oh, I want to draw this out. I have to draw this out. This is, oh my God, it's like exploding in my mind, so I have to make it clear to other people. Mm -hmm.